welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about lesson 6-3 and it says conditions for parallelograms. And what that means is that there's a set of theorems or a set of requirements that every parallelogram needs to be a parallelogram. So if you look off to this list I have on the left, it gives a list of requirements of things that are needed for a shape to be considered a parallelogram. So if you are a typical question, it might say something like, um, given the information, prove or show that this is a parallelogram. So the first one says both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. And what that means, this is just the definition. So that's the definition of a parallelogram. Um, that just tells us what it is. So that's okay. The next one says that one pair of opposite sides are parallel and congruent. So if I'm looking at the parallelogram here off to my right, it could be these two sides they're opposite from each other, and they could be parallel and congruent, or it could be these two sides, but it has to be uh, at least one pair. And if at least one pair um, of opposite sides are parallel and congruent, then that means it's a parallelogram. The next one says both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So that means that when they gave me the parallelogram, I would have to see something like this. That shows me that the opposite sides are congruent to each other. The next one says um, both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So that means I could have I could have something like this. These are opposite of each other, and these two are opposite of each other, but it has to be both pairs. The next one um, says uh, one angle is supplementary to both of its consecutive angles. Okay, so the word consecutive means next to, so not across from, and the word supplementary means it equals 180 degrees. So let's assume that this angle here is 100 degrees. That means the angles next to it have to be um, supplementary. So the angles next to it would be this angle and this angle. This one doesn't count because it's across from, it's not next to. So in order for this one to count, this angle here would have to be 80 degrees because 100 plus 80 is 180. And this one also would have to be 80 degrees because 100 plus 80 is 180. And the last requirement is that the diagonals bisect each other, which means they basically just cut each other in half. So if I have two diagonals inside the parallelogram, it means that they would be cutting each other in half. And that's it. So I need at least one of these to make sure that my shape is actually a parallelogram. So let's start with the first example. The first example is to verify. Mm, to verify means to check. So this one says show that PQRS is a parallelogram. And then they gave us some variables for a equals 2.4 and b equals 9. So the only thing I have to do is make sure I plug in those numbers for the variables. So if I look at my parallelogram, I would have to have q and r be supplementary 
they wouldn't be equal to each other because they're next to each other, so they'd equal two different things. So they have to, when I add them together, have to be 180. And then these angle or these sides, QP and RS, would have to be equal to each other. At least. So they don't tell if it's, if it's parallel, but they do tell us that it is, they are um, equal. So let's double check. And that's all it's asking for us is to check. So what I would do, take the first part, let's deal with the angles first. So I would come over here and put 10B plus 16 plus 9B plus 25 equals 180. Okay, so 10 times, and they gave us 9, plus 16, plus 9 times 9, plus 25. Okay, so 10 times 9, is 90 plus 16 plus 9 times 9 which is 81 oops not 18 plus 25 okay so if i add all that together it should equal 180 so let's double check and make sure so I have 90 plus 16 plus 81 plus 25. Oops, I realized I made a mistake. Instead of adding, I should have subtracted. So let's go back here and this should be minus 16 so try it one more time so I have 90 minus 16 plus 81 plus 25 and that does equal 180 so these two angles work now I have to check to make sure QP and RS are congruent to each other. So what I can do is set them equal and they should be the same thing. So 7A equals 2A plus 12. So we'll do one side at a time. So when I do 7 times 2.4, um, that gives me 16.8. I'm going to double check one more time. Okay. So let's see if this side equals the same thing. So I have 2 times 2.4 plus 12. Well, um, 2 times 2.4 is 4.8. And when I add 12, that gives me 16.8. So they are equal to each other. So this works. So by verifying this, I understand that these angles are consecutive so q and r they equal 180 or are supplementary and consecutive and qp and rs are congruent to one another when i look back it fulfills the first one 
since um, I know that the sides are congruent, that part checks out, and I know that they're parallel because of how the angles are set up. Okay, this next example says determine if each quadrilateral must be a parallelogram. And I have to justify my answer. So when I look at the first one, the first one is a parallelogram because these two, so this first one here on the left, the, um, the diagonal forms two triangles out of the parallelogram and their angles correspond. So this angle corresponds to this angle and these are opposite angles of the parallelogram. So you know that part checks out. And this angle corresponds to this one, which means that these, this angle here, are probably the same. And so this fulfills the one rule that says that um, both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So this checks out. When I look at the next one, this here, this one doesn't work, and the reason is, is because its opposite sides um, are not congruent, and as far as we know, we don't know if they're parallel because it doesn't tell us. All it tells me is that the consecutive sides, so the ones that are next to each other, um, oops, that's the wrong one, the ones that are next to each other here are equal to each other. But the rules don't say anything about that. They only talk about opposite sides. So this one is no.